Hey, if you're considering refractive surgery, there are four major types of refractive surgery available in the US today. And I'm gonna walk you through a way to identify which might be appropriate for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Josh Cohen. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist here at Cohen Laser Vision Center in Bogotone, Florida. The four major types of refractive surgery are LASIK, PRK, SMILE, and ICL. Now there are other variants like limbal relaxing incisions like LRI or even radial keratotomy, incision-based corneal surgeries that we really don't do much anymore or we do in limited situations. So I will defer those topics for another video. But in general, these four options are really great, but some patients might be better suited for one over the other. Now, I did make other videos about the laser type of refractive surgery. Those are LASIK, PRK, and SMILE. And for reference, that video will be linked here. Now there is another type of surgery that is bundled within this group, that is ICL. That is an implanted lens-based procedure. And for an overview on that, I will link here. So let's get started. Let's assume that you have no other conditions like dry eye, you're not getting pregnant, everything else. You are a good candidate for refractive surgery. Which of these might be suitable for you? The first thing is to look at your overall prescription. Are you nearsighted or farsighted? If you happen to be farsighted, meaning your prescription is plus on the glasses power, then that means that only PRK and LASIK are even options at all. Smile and ICL are not appropriate for those who are farsighted. So that's important issue number one. However, if you're nearsighted, all of these options might be available to you. Now, the degree of nearsightedness is also important. If you are a mild degree of nearsightedness, which is I consider less than three diopters, then LASIK, SMILE, and PRK are good options for you. ICL right now is only approved for moderate to severe levels of nearsightedness, so ICL would not be appropriate in your particular situation. Now, what if you are significantly nearsighted? Let's say greater than eight or nine diopters, minus eight, minus nine, for example. Then for most patients, I'd recommend only PRK and ICL. Now LASIK could be appropriate for patients with particularly thick corneas. However, the main advantage of LASIK, which is the flap that you use to protect the eye and make you heal very quickly, that flap results in treatments that are deeper within the corneal tissues, and therefore, with high degrees of myopic correction, a lot of corneal tissue is removed. That could mean that the residual tissue is unstable for patients with LASIK and high degrees of correction. Therefore, I usually reserve LASIK for mild to moderate levels of nearsightedness, whereas PRK can really kind of do a lot more. However, for patients on the higher end of the nearsighted spectrum, PRK, while technically safer than LASIK, still can result in a central flattening that could result in some distortions and glare and halos and what we call higher order aberrations. So sometimes, even for those moderate to high degrees of nearsightedness, I might recommend ICL over PRK for those patients. Another consideration is the procedure time itself. So all these are relatively quick and painless procedures as far as the operation is concerned. However, there are differences in how quickly these surgeries can be done. Generally, if necessary, both eyes can be treated at the same day, and all of them are usually done in an outpatient surgical center or in the doctor's office. Now, SMILE is probably the quickest procedure overall because it only requires one laser. That laser zaps a small lenticule within the cornea, and then the surgeon carefully pulls it out, and that's it. The next fastest procedure is PRK. PRK requires removing the epithelium, and then the laser retreating the eye, and then a bandaged contact lens being placed on the eye. That's on the order of about you know, five to 10 minutes per eye overall. Sometimes an additional step like using mitomycin to control scarring might be applied to the cornea in higher degrees of correction with PRK, but that's at your doctor's discretion. The next fastest is LASIK, takes on average less than 10 minutes per eye, but that requires two different lasers. One laser makes a flap in the cornea. The actual time under the laser is only a few seconds, maybe 10 to 12 seconds or so. And then the patient is often rotated to the other laser, and then that flap is lifted by the doctor, and then the second laser reshapes the eye. We usually plan for LASIK patients to be in and out of the operating suite somewhere in about 20 to 30 minutes, including prep and sterilization time as well. And the longest procedure of the bunch is ICL. Now granted, ICL is still quite a quick procedure, less than 10 minutes per eye on average, but it does require more sterilization and more precautions. So we usually budget about an hour for both eyes in ICL in our practice. Now, again, all these procedures are safe, quick, and painless, 
but technically the intraoperative time is a little different, the shortest being SMILE and the longest being ICL, and PRK and LASIK being somewhere in the middle. The next consideration is recovery time. On the spectrum from shortest to longest, SMILE and LASIK are the shortest recovery times. SMILE is excellent in terms of recovery even the next day. Same thing with LASIK. In between, with a, re a recovery time of less than a week on average, I would put ICL. ICL requires a incision within the cornea and the lens being implanted within the eye, so there's a little bit more inflammation in some patients, and oftentimes we need drops for a little bit longer, several weeks in our practice. And on the longest end of the recovery spectrum is PRK. PRK can be quite uncomfortable, as I mentioned in my other video, particularly for the first three to five days after surgery, as the epithelium heals. And during that time, some people can return to work, but some people can't. Their, their eyes are tearing too much, it's difficult for them to open the eyes, they're very sensitive to light, and they might be limited in what they can do within the first week of surgery. So PRK has the longest recovery, certainly with regards to that first week. Additionally, with PRK, we often put patients on steroid drops for several months after surgery, two to three months afterwards, to make sure that the corneal epithelium is healing in the right way at the right time. And therefore, even though most of the healing occurs in the first week, the last 10% or so, the final refraction, could take some time to stabilize. So the longest recovery time is PRK. Another consideration is your lifestyle. If you do a lot of contact sports, water sports like water skiing or um, scuba diving, then sometimes LASIK might not be the best option because the flap itself can be compromised or moved with significant force, but that is something to be aware of. Therefore, patients with high active lifestyles, I recommend SMILE and PRK most. ICL can also be used for those lifestyles, but only after the lens has settled into position several weeks after surgery. Another consideration that you might not know about is if you have a thin cornea. And you won't know that until you get your evaluation oftentimes, because the doctor will have to do measurements of the cornea to determine if that's the case with you. There's no real symptoms of having thin or thick corneas for most patients. If you have a thin cornea, however, LASIK may not be a great option for you, and SMILE might also be a little bit risky because the tissues are removed within the thick center parts of the cornea. However, PRK by only treating the surface might be a reasonable option for you, and same thing with ICL. And what about dry eye? If you have dry eye, any of these surgeries can make it worse, and that's the truth. However, on the spectrum of most likely to least likely related to causing dry eye, I would put LASIK at number one, PRK at number two, and SMILE and ICL somewhere in that third and fourth category, depending. If you have an astigmatism, what are your options now? In my practice, I would say that the best overall option for astigmatism correction, if you're nearsighted, is LASIK, PRK, and ICL. All three of them are fine. While SMILE does treat in astigmatism, I'm not as convinced that it treats it as well as other eczema-based lasers. However, it certainly is appropriate if that's something that you want to pursue. And if it's greater than 40 diopters, then non-contoura PRK or LASIK might be appropriate. In some cases, PRK gives the most amount of astigmatism correction, up to six diopters depending on your prescription and the laser that's being used. Now, astigmatism correction is a complicated topic when it comes to refractive surgery because while most lasers can treat it, they often treat them in different ways. It's important to ask your doctor what type of laser system that they're using so that you can kind of get some information as to whether or not it's the right choice for you. So I hope that helps talk about some top level considerations so that as a doctor starts offering you different options, you kind of have some idea in the background as to why one might be slightly better than the other. Now keep in mind, just because something might be at the top of this list doesn't mean that you couldn't get an alternative as long as you and your doctor agree that it's safe for you. There's a lot of overlap here. A lot of patients are candidates for all of these. So it really just depends on what is important to you and what symptoms and side effects are most concerning to you. So if you want more information on these different surgeries, you can certainly visit our website at comblazer.com. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Thanks again for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.